what's up, MKBHD here. And every year, like clockwork around the second week of September, assuming no pandemic related delays, we expect the new iPhone to come out or iPhones since now it's a whole lineup of phones. And last year was the biggest iPhone lineup ever unveiled all at once. We got four different models and we fully expect again this year to see four new models and the evolving rumors about them have been making headlines for the past couple months as always. Real quick first though, we have finally launched that secret second channel. It's the studio channel and it's up. The first video that just dropped today is now live. It's a studio tour, which a lot of you guys have been asking about. And now you can finally see the finished space. You can meet the team and you can head over there and subscribe to see a lot more stuff like behind the scenes and all the sort of things you've been asking that we don't quite get a chance to put on the main channel. It's all over there. If you subscribe soon, hopefully you can be one of the first 100,000 in the first week. It's one of our goals. That'd be nice. Okay, so I've got four of the new models of the iPhone 13 expected this year, and they map right alongside last year. The 13 mini, the 13, the 13 Pro, and the 13 Pro Max. I'm predicting there's gonna be a pretty short video because they are so similar. Also, of course, it doesn't guarantee a whole lot, but these are just some of the things that we think we can expect from the next iPhone. These aren't, of course, from Apple. They're made around the things we expect to see. And so if you wanna build cases or accessories for the iPhone, that's what these sort of models are built to be useful for. So as we've learned, it's about to be August and these phones in real life are already pretty much hardware locked somewhere inside Apple's Spaceship Campus right now as we approach fall for launch. But just so we're clear, this is all still technically speculation, but holding these models in the hand for the first time, it's pretty quickly evident we're looking at pretty similar designs, right? Same shapes, same sizes. This of course lines up with the, the flat lines and everything from last year's iPhone. Makes sense. We've seen them stick with one design for multiple years and this is the 12's design. The new stuff that we can actually look at though are number one, the port. Now a port is technically not a new thing since we've always had ports, but there's been a rumor that's made the rounds about Apple possibly getting rid of the lightning port and not switching to USB-C, but just going totally portless, completely wireless for everything on all the new iPhones, or maybe just the pro phones, but possibly across the whole lineup. And while I still think they're aiming for that, and I made a whole video about why Apple's aiming for a portless future, these new models, all of them, do have ports. Now to me that just says the MagSafe ecosystem is not quite ready to pick up where Lightning left off. Now there was a big deal made about MagSafe. It, it was the new charging standard, the new wireless charging on the back of the iPhone, slap it on there with magnets. And there are a bunch of really good MagSafe accessories out now. There's MagSafe compatible cases. There are things that slap on the back of the phone. My favorite car mount is really good, the one Moment makes. I'll link that one below. I've been using it for a while now. But even Apple's first party accessories are slowly starting to grow out. They just dropped that $100 MagSafe battery bank that attaches to the back of the iPhone. But it really does feel a little early to just jump straight to that and totally get rid of the port. It was already kind of a big deal when Apple bumped up from five watts to 20 watts of charging on the iPhone. MagSafe only supports up to 15 watts. We're living in a world where there are phones charging at 50, 65, maybe soon 100 plus watts wirelessly, which is awesome. And this just isn't quite at the flagship, at the tier that I'd want it to be. So maybe they're waiting for better wireless charging to, to make the MagSafe transition easier. But at this point, it feels too easy to go portless or too early to go portless. So then the rest of the phone pretty much lines up with the iPhone 12s. Same speaker placement, same thickness and height across the lineup. Then I did notice slightly lower button placement actually, which I like a lot and feels best on the bigger phones, but this is actually only on the middle size phones, the 13 and the 13 Pro. The buttons are in the same place on the 13 Pro Max and the 13 Mini, interestingly. But then one more big change is these cameras, which are somehow all bigger. So the 13 and 13 mini here have dual cameras still, but they switch to this diagonal orientation. And then the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max still have triple cameras, but look at the new size of these camera modules. They're bigger and they look pretty similar at first, but I actually think we can read into these a little bit more than them just being bigger. So here's my interpretation of this. In the 13 and the 13 mini, You've got these two dual cameras now, roughly the same size of overall module. They're a diagonal lineup now. And the lower right one is actually a bit larger. 
which to me would hopefully mean a larger sensor back here, which is nice. We've wanted larger sensors in iPhones for a long time, and they only did one larger sensor on last year's iPhone, the big 12 Pro Max, but it's possible, and we see this all the time, where the newest stuff, the best stuff from last year's flagship trickles down in price. So that could be what we're seeing here with bigger sensor. Now on the 13 Pro and Pro Max though, the big phones, check this out. The whole camera bump is a larger footprint, but it's not because the lenses are much bigger. They're actually just a bit more spread out. And to me, this might not actually be bigger sensors, but it may be better stabilization. So you may remember last year on that iPhone 12 Pro Max, that was the only one to feature advanced sensor shift stabilization, and it was only on the larger primary sensor. This year, it looks like there may be more room to use this more active, precise sensor shift stabilization on all of the sensors. So even if the sensor isn't bigger, or if it's a little bit bigger, they can hold it still for longer shutter speeds and longer periods of time. And that gets you less noise in photos without the drawbacks that come from huge sensors and smartphones like super shallow depth of field fringing. So those are some interesting things to look forward to behind the new designs of some of these cameras here. Now, of course, there's a bunch of other stuff that these new models or mock-ups will never tell us, like ProMotion. That's one of the biggest, almost weirdly most interesting rumors about these new phones because you'd think by now where every other phone out there has a higher refresh rate display, the iPhone being last up, they've got to do it. We don't know that just from these dummies, but it may just be the Pro models or maybe across the lineup, either way. I hope to see ProMotion. But then these models don't tell us specs or RAM or anything like that. We already know what iOS 15 looks like. That should launch typically around the same time the iPhone does. And they also don't tell us if the notch is the same size. Now, but there is one thing to notice, which is if you look closely on some of these models, you can see you know they've cut out some smaller sensors underneath the earpiece, but they did move the earpiece all the way up further up higher on the top of the phone. And I feel like that's only something you would do if you're sort of reorganizing or sort of just compressing all of these pieces up here in the Face ID cluster to try to make a smaller notch. So not getting rid of it, but at least giving you some of that screen real estate back now that the iPhone really just has one of the biggest notches in any phone and has for a couple years now. Then there are still some rumors about them possibly bringing an in-display fingerprint reader to bring Touch ID back and maybe combining that with Face ID. As much as I would like to see it personally, I feel like this one's less likely. I could see them just totally ignoring fingerprint sensors and sticking with Face ID. But that's it. That's really all we get from these sort of models when they come out every year. We don't even know if it's gonna be called the iPhone 13. It could be 12S for all we know. Although that's pretty unlikely because there was no 11S. It seems like they're just going just straight with the plus one number from here on out. But yeah, what do you think? Is, uh, is this upgrade, I'm just, I'm holding the, the model of the Pro Max right now. Is a 120 hertz display and possibly some better cameras on the back enough to get you to upgrade? And I guess that's a bit of a weird question because most people with last year's phone shouldn't be upgrading anyway. But on older phones, even to tell the difference, if some of these uh, smaller models like the Mini, the 13 Mini or the 13 are really just a slight camera improvement and some bumped specs, feels like almost the same phone. But I'm curious what you guys think of what you've seen from these models. Either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching and definitely make sure to check out the Studio channel. Really excited about its launching and I'll see you guys over there. All right, catch you later. Peace.